you know, Oregon has its own banana belt, a near tropical landscape on the southern Oregon coast. But you won't find mangoes, papayas, or pineapples. Instead, you'll find giant redwoods, dug fir, and cedar. Hi there, I'm Grant McComey, your host for Travel Oregon's Grant's Getaways. And this week, that's where we're headed, the southern Oregon coast, and discover more about a singular wood it's famous in Oregon, and it dates back a century. Come on along. We're headed to the house of Myrtlewood. The Myrtlewood shavings really fly when Ray Martinez goes to work. That's a dying hour the turning. Not many people do it anymore. Ray's been at this nearly 20 years with steel tools called gouges, scrapers, and chisels. He turns Myrtlewood blocks into fine bowls, plates, even tables. It takes a while to perfect it. But I can tell, like when I show you that piece of wood, when I turned it, I know it was going to be beautiful just by the coloring of it. Bring the beauty out of the wood. Yeah. That's yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Finding beauty in the wood has been the carver's goal ever since the House of Myrtlewood opened in Coos Bay back in 1929. They sawed logs into giant slabs that a row of carvers transformed into gift shop goodies for tourists to take home. Myrtlewood is a very hard wood, and so it's great for cutting boards and the utilitarian use. And then also the beauty. Each piece is a different coloration. So Myrtlewood is a blonde, and it can go all the way up to a dark brown. There's no staining. We don't want to cover the color of the Myrtlewood because it's so fantastic all on its own. You can hike on your own through a Myrtlewood Grove at Alfred Loeb State Park. It's an easy trail that winds through 40 acres the largest publicly owned old growth myrtle stand in the state. It's kind of like camphor or eucalyptus leaves. If, if you crush one of those leaves, it'll clear your sinuses because it has that kind of strength in it. Kind of a clean, fresh smell that is unique to our campground. Ray is one of a handful of carvers left in Oregon who carves myrtle full time. This is what we call dry root number two. He says the wood is naturally wet and must dry out for three months. It will lose half its weight before he carves an inch. And yet he already sees something special in the wood. Like this, this is going to be a really beautiful piece of wood. So is that. You so can the tell more, by the color. the more color and grain. Very good character. People yeah. like that, yeah. That's what they want, yes. Under loud leather belts and clanking steel wheels that date to the Great Depression, Ray turns out even more bowls that he hands off to apprentice Michael Berry. He finishes each with ever finer sandpaper. By the time it's done with the 220, you should barely be able to see the lines on there. And then mineral oil gives the myrtle life. This piece is marked by fiddleback, contortions in the grain like undulating waves, and give the bowl a washboard effect. Ready to be signed. It is gorgeous. It's going home with me. <laughs> Beautiful. And it's easy to see why people fall in love with these small pieces of hand carved Oregon that are delivered with huge amounts of pride. Man, you're good. Well, really good. 17 years. Yeah. 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 I believe it. We have all the details, directions, and contact information so you can make your own visit to the House of Myrtlewood right here on the Travel Oregon website. So be sure to check it out. And if you're interested in more Oregon outdoor adventure, be sure to check out my new book, Grant's Getaways, My Guide to Wildlife Watching in Oregon. So until next week, do get out here and explore the Oregon outdoors. Let Travel Oregon be your guide. For Travel Oregon, I'm Grant McCombie.